Hello there, and welcome to Scenes, the movie podcast, episode three. That's three, not five. Um, three shall be the number of the episode, and the number of the episode shall be three. Five is right out. This is number three. And uh, this special is dedicated to a legendary actress who I've been a big fan of for many years now. And uh, she celebrated her 80th birthday yesterday, which is quite staggering. Catherine Deneuve. Um, she's just got a staggering filmography. Any film buff who really loves you know, European cinema, uh, stories about people, uh, mixed, all kinds of stories actually. She's not just one type of performance. She does a lot of comedy, dark roles, even a little bit of horror. She's just, she is, in many ways, she is cinema. Like Mastriani <clears throat> was the male face of European cinema, Deneuve is very much who we all think of, you know, a lot of us do anyway, when we think of European cinema. And, but um, the thing is, it's, that filmography she's got is just a staggering. It's the, you know, everybody knows the obvious ones like Belle de Jure and um, Umbrellas and uh, The Girls of Rochefort and The Hunger um, and Doshin. But, um, you know, there's a wealth of performances there. Hit, some of them are hidden, some of them are for more obscure directors, Italian films, French films, a couple of American films that aren't quite as good, but there's ones for Manuel de Oliveira, a Portuguese filmmaker, but in this episode I'm just going to kind of walk people through the Deneuve filmography. I did write a book about Deneuve's films last year or the year before, and um, that was very interesting because I'd already I'd written a book about one of her favourite co-stars, co-stars, the French actor Michel Piccoli, and she made about eight or nine films with him, and um, they got on really well, and I was lucky enough to speak to Deneuve for that book on the phone. You know, quite br- I'd say about 10, 15 minutes, but she told me all about working with Michelle Piccoli and memories of, you know, the, the classic films like Belle de Jure and the Young Girls of Rochefort and all the various films she'd been in with him, and uh, like Benjamin and La Chamade. And um, talking to her was really good because it, you have to be careful because these people become so legendary that you, you almost see them as a myth. So when this legend rings the rings the phone and you, you're speaking to him and you Jesus Christ it's Catherine Deneuve you know but, but it's just a woman she just happens to be a talented actress but really she's like you and me she's a regular person but it was very strange just to be sat there and I got an email and I said it said um, Mr Deneuve's trying to ring your house phone but at the time my wife was on the phone to her mother they were talking about fireplaces and I'm like oh my god come on get off the phone quick Catherine Deneuve's trying to ring so they severed the call within 30 seconds I answered the phone hello Hello, Gris. It's Catherine Deneuve. <clears throat> Unbelievable. And I uh, set the recorder up. We had this nice little chat. But then at the end of it, I started asking more questions. And she, was, I think it was a little bit she'd had enough by then. Because 15 minutes talking is <laughs> it's quite enough for the mis- mysterious woman of French cinema. And she's like, oh, sorry, Gris. I can't tell you. We're, we're driving. We're going through a tunnel. I can't tell you. Aye, that's enough. Yeah, see you later. Thank you. So she went after that. But, you know, it was uh, such an honour to get an insight. But for anybody who doesn't know... Yeah, there's all these cliches about Catherine Deneuve. The fact that she's the ice queen of European cinema, the glacial, distant woman we all desire. <clears throat> that she actually is Belle de Jour from Bunuel's film. Uh, that she she encapsulates everything there is to know about French sophistication. and That she was with Marcello Mastriani and David Bailey. Uh, these things are true, some of them, of course, but others are misconceptions and exaggerations, which I'm sure irritate Deneuve herself, too. But for me, she represents... Like, you know, beauty and glamour and the European style and larger than life stardom. But really, she's just an artist to me, a, a, a real actress. You know, she's an icon of fashion and, and one of the most famous women of the past 50 years. But she's never let the fame get in the way of the work. She's given some really unflattering performances. She's played some terrible people, played some very troubled people, haunted people, demented people. Uh, vampires, you, you know, everything really, but she just doesn't let the fact that she's this huge global icon get in the way of the work. And there's not many people who can do that consistently for 50 or nearly 60 years actually. Uh, she's hung on to her credibility. Um, and for me, she brings to mind countless wonderful films, you know, masterpieces, and the guarantee that she's going to impress in every single film she's in. Uh, she was born in 1943, so you know, she's just celebrated her 80th birthday. Her sister Francois, she had, um, her parents were actors. And it was actually Francois herself who got into acting first. And she very much wanted to follow in the footsteps of her parents. But Deneuve, well, she changed her name from Doliac to Deneuve. She never really wanted to be an actress, but she kind of followed her sister, you know, get, got a couple of roles in movies. And then, you know, 
becoming Catherine Deneuve, it became a character almost like this is an identity for her to be famous as Catherine Deneuve. So the real Catherine is somebody else. So she can separate herself and she became Catherine Deneuve really for, you know, like in Umbrellas of Cherbourg and <clears throat> um, in 1965 she was in Roman Polanski's Repulsion which had a massive impact all over the world and kind of established the fact that there was two sides to Deneuve. She could be the sweet, uh, perfect girl next like door in Umbrellas and then she could be this kind of dark, tormented soul as in Repulsion. So I think them two films there very early on they set the pattern for a lot of what is to come because she can do these really appealing roles then there's this dark underbelly we think Jesus and it can be quite unsettling because she's a beautiful woman and she's glamorous and, but underneath you know you've got this there's a glacial quality a lot of the time there's an ice, iciness but beneath, even beneath that you've got this kind of whoa like in Repulsion she genuinely becomes quite terrifying so I think early, very early on her career is strong from the word go and, and to be honest even now she's on a she's on a real role lately and she's never had a dip in her career uh i can't think of any time where even you know, people do say in the 70s she kind of lost her way a little bit and they didn't know what to do with her but I, there's some great films in the 70s i don't know why they really say that from the very beginning you know you, if you think of the 1960s you think of dustin hoffman in graduate you know looking through and Bancroft's leg, you think of David Hemmons in Blow Up, taking the pictures, and and you also think of that image of Deneuve in Belle de Jour, looking through the hole, looking through the keyhole, all the songs she sings in, in Cherbourg, and, and running across the corridor with all the hands coming out of the wall in Repulsion, so the early days of her career is, is full of iconic moments, but um, there's so much more to it than just moments, you know, the, her performances very early on were very deep, I mean, we all love those early, you know, Jack Demi's Umbrellas of Cherbourg and stuff like that but it's not really the stuff that really captured my imagination that was Repulsion because her and Polanski are a perfect pair in that because like you say she's she's got the beauty and she looks like this like a model but she works at the hairdressers in Repulsion in London she's an outsider she doesn't speak the language very well she's living with her sister and just through something that happens it, it, through Repulsion in fact through her, I think it's her um, sister's boyfriend that really triggers this breakdown this the kind of repulsion to everything around her she slowly unravels and it's a horror film really but it's psychological horror at its finest and Polanski just really takes you inside the nerves head and she delivers a mesmerizing performance it's, honestly it's if I'm sure everybody's seen it but if you haven't god it's on another level and then, and then if you think from there she just goes to work in on the creatures with um, Agnes Varda uh, which is a hidden film with Michelle Piccoli where she's she can't speak, she's mute in that. So it's a very strange performance. It's not, it's not like something that you'd run to immediately, but it's a little hidden gem. The Young Girls of Rochefort, of course. Uh, the other wonderful musical from the late 60s. That's a pure iconic de nerve. You know, you can't quite top those films if you want a musical from that time. Young Girls of Rochefort and The Umbrellas of Cherbourg are just fantastic. But then de nerve really gets interesting because that's when she gets with Bunuel. And she makes Belle de Jour, which is a film that everybody knows her for, really. It's the one she's going to be remembered for more than any other. Where she plays this kind of bored housewife who's repressed, sexually repressed. And she starts working at this, basically a brothel, high-class brothel. And she sort of gets involved with wrong people and her husband knows nothing about it. It's all about, she has these fantasies, you know, the famous one where she's the slinger with mud. Or is it shit? I'm not sure. But anyway, it's this kind of double-laid performance where you've got this emotionless, blank, kind of repressed person on the surface and underneath there's all this stuff going on and Deneuve captures that really well but for me it's like, you know, she did. She came to Hollywood a little bit after that and did April Fool with Jack Lemmon not a very good film but it's okay, it's just very corny you can see the difference between European films at the time and a mainstream Hollywood film you know, Belle de Jour to April Fool, it's, there's quite a juxtaposition she made a very interesting film with a great director called Michel Deville called Benjamin, that was 1968 co-starring Michelle Piccoli. I did interview Michelle Deville once, but he's sadly passed away last year, but he had a really good filmography. And I think she only worked with him once, but that's a guy to check out. Really good filmmaker. And she made a film called La Chamade with um, Michelle Piccoli, where they're, you know, he's a sugar daddy type person, and she realises that he's the guy she needs to be with. When I spoke to Deneuve, she actually gives some memories of that film, which is quite cool, because it's a bit of a, bit of a buried gem, in my opinion. It's a good film. 
there's obviously Mississippi Mermaid for Francois Truffaut, 1969. Um, a lot of people will, will go straight to that because it's the two films she made with Truffaut, this one and later she made Last Metro, of course. They're really good performances because they're so multi-layered and especially in Mississippi Mermaid, there's this hidden darkness again. So exterior, this beautiful woman turns up on the island, but then you start to find more out and it unravels and she's brilliant in them kind of roles. And for me, everyone talks about Belle de Jour, but um, I'd, I'd prefer the other film she made with Bunwell in 1970, which is Tristana, with Fernando Rey. I mean, that is just a staggeringly good film. I love Belle de Jour, of course, but that's on another level. And then at this time, it, this is when she was with Mastriani. They were in a re- relationship and they had a daughter together. But they made four films as well, which four slightly buried films. There's one called Lisa, or the bitch or La Cagna in de- various titles where uh, Marcello plays an artist who's living on an island and he has a dog she happens to be on the island as a nerve and the dog dies and she kind of takes place of the dog and he's very misogynistic and you know people these days are probably have, would find it problematic as they say these days <clears throat> that's for the great director Marco Ferreri who she also made another film with with Marcello again called Don't Touch the White Woman which is a strange like a western but it's a western set on a Build on a building site. You've got like Marcello playing Buffalo Bill, and oh god, it's such just a bizarre film. But it's a good film. And then she made two other films with uh, one for Jack Demi, a slightly pregnant man, <laughs> with Marcello as a man who yes believes he's pregnant. It's not a great film, but it's fun. It's funny to watch. And they, there's another one where they play a couple called It Only Happens to Others, where they sadly lose a child. But the seventies, you know, there's some there's some interesting things in the seventies. There's one called Le Gresham. But it's an interesting film. There's a gentleman whose um, wife and daughter are murdered. And Deneuve plays the sister-in-law and they kind of hook up together. They don't become an item, but there's this flirtation, there's this weird mind game going on. She plays a very dark, strange role in that. That's a very appealing performance because it's kind of a, another one of those tortured roles where you're you kind of warm to her, but at the same time you find her dangerous, so you're kind of drawn to her. You can imagine being drawn to her if you met that character. She plays them kind of characters really well. She made another film uh, in an English language film called March or Die with Gene Hackman. Again, it's okay, but it's just not on. It's not on the level of what she was making in Europe. It was a great film called Ecu Ecuva, where she plays like a secret agent. She has a karate scene. It's 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 a very interesting sight to see her doing this kind of martial arts. She's not a martial arts movie, but she does a little bit of convincing martial arts. It's a bit of a mystery story, but. She can really convince it's like a female Mike Hammer or something. There's a great film called The Forbidden Room, Dino Risi, where um, the young man goes to Venice and moves in with his uncle, and it turns out to be Vittorio Gassman, and he's not very nice. And he lives in this huge estate, and Deneuve is his wife, but she's kind of put upon, she never leaves the house. And there is a forbidden room, as the title says, in, in the in the house, and another mystery unfolds within that, which in, which includes, well, I won't say anything, because that's... That's a film to really seek out, The Forbidden Room, uh, 1977, and Deneuve gives another one of those weird performances, but she's a bit sad in that, a bit like shut into one room, pale. It's one of her classic kind of outsider performances where she's just very, very strange indeed. And obviously you get into the 80s, you get Last Metro, which is one of her defining films. Everyone who likes Deneuve will go straight to Last Metro. But there's another one from the same year called Je Vous M, where she's with Depardieu and... Um, Serge Gainsbourg that's a really good film it's a bit, little bit hard to get older of in English but when you do find it it's a, it's a film really worth watching it's a good it's enjoyable and she made another one with uh, Depardieu around the same time called Choice of Arms in the 80s you know, there's, there's a lot of good things in the 80s like The Hunger obviously with David Bowie for Tony Scott which is probably maybe with Belle de Jour, probably one of the most famous to know films which will, she will be remembered for but of course is it Endoshi in which she won an Oscar nomination That's at the start of the 90s it's interesting because at this point she's entering her 50s and for me this is when her performances get really good uh, my favourite season you know, 1993 and Thieves from 96 The Convent for Manuel de Oliveira with John Malkovich that's a very strange dark film there's Place Vendome which she got a lot of acclaim for which is, I'm not really crazy about the film itself but she's brilliant at it as kind of an alcoholic gallery owner, and there's a bit of a mystery that unfolds. And then there's like things like Polar X and East West is a really good film. But um, my favourite film from that time is Nightwind, 
where she plays she's not the main role but she, she goes out with a younger guy in it and she's a little bit of a lost soul it's quite a sad film uh, Nightwind and it's just got this real she's got this really sad air in that film it's like a woman who's lost and you, you know you want to you want to connect with her but at the same time you know that it wouldn't be a good idea she's got this balance of, of the the beauty and the appeal but then the dangerous side where you where you just know it would be the best thing to stay away but, um, into the 2000s where she's she really I think in the last 20 odd years she's given some of her best performances like in eight women things like that you know the, the musical she's got a small role in I'm going home her Manuel de Oliveira, which is one of my favorite films of that time uh, and there's another one called After Him, which is a really tragic film from 2007 where a son dies and she doesn't really grieve properly, but all her all her emotion gets attached to the son's friend and she gets a bit obsessed with him and it's very, it gets very dark. But in that film, she kind of loses herself. She, she You don't recognise her as the nerve in that film. You know, She gets lost in the performance. It's fantastic and uh, that's called After Him. But and there's another one called A Christmas Tale, which is... A seminal film from that time. It's got loads of great French actors in it. It's just about a family meeting up at Christmas, and she's got cancer as the nerve, and there's all these different plots going back and forth. It's it's a long film, but it just holds you. It's about two and a half hours. It holds you the whole way. It's just a great drama, you know, about people and overlapping stories. There's one called Park Benches, which is good, and uh, Potiche, of course, where she works in a factory with the husband, and he gets gets taken out of the scene. She takes over the factory, and she meets Depardieu, a guy she knew from years ago. And it's about a woman who's basically been kept for years, but she's been suppressed as well, so she's not enjoyed life, even though she's been kept and spoilt money wise. And she starts to discover who she really is through taking over the factory. But um, yeah, there's loads of great films. There's one fo- one film called In the Courtyard, where her and this gentleman live in a block of flats, and they they kind of develop this strange friendship. For, nothing really happens. Dan's le car in French, in the courtyard. It's 2014. Nothing amazing happens, but you just think this is a really great character study, and that's the great thing about the film she's made in the 21st century. You find that these these are character films where you're not waiting for the next plot twist, the next action scene, the next train to explode, the next guy to jump out of a window, or none of this nonsense. You're just watching human beings in real situations. Nothing particularly remarkable, but the characters that you want to know, you want to get to know, and you care about what happens to them. Like in The Midwife, for instance, where she she plays the stepmother of a midwife who's... She comes gets back in touch with her and she wants to connect with her, even though the dad's died years ago, and she, you know, it's it's, a, it's sad at first. You think, why she want to get connected? And then you realise she's got cancer, and she starts to get close to the, to the former stepdaughter. And she's funny in that film. It's like a, it's a lively, funny... She's a real character. She's... A, Smoking, eating lots of food that's bad for her, and even though she's no, she's got cancer, she won't quit the smoking. It's a classic Deneuve kind of stubborn, older lady performance, but she's still vital and young, and it's a great performance. And um, obviously, of course, there's the fantastic The Truth, which she co-stars with Juliette Binoche and Ethan Hawke. She plays, I suppose, like a parody of herself, really, a light parody of this legendary French actress who's finally writing her autobiography she's she's a character that let's just put it that way and she's larger than life and she's a bit of a bitch sometimes but she's it's a character that Deneuve really plays brilliantly she probably knows that that them kind of actresses you know the egotistical larger than life maybe getting a bit too big for the boots type people but she just she pokes fun out of her own her own um, legendary status a little bit and her own legacy without mocking her legacy. It's not like De Niro in Dirty Grandpa or whatever. You know, it's a good, it's still a solid performance, but it's a little there's a little nod to her own career in there. But there's another film that's kind of buried in that time called The Brand New Testament, which is so insane. Let's just say it, it features a scene where Catherine Deneuve's falling in love with a gorilla and she's in bed with a gorilla. I'll just leave that in your mind. But yeah, there's so many there's so many good films and it's just. When people say to know, they just think of you know as a as as a glamorous figure, or you know coming to, to red carpet events and getting out of limousines or whatever. But there's all these really complex performances where she's just completely wrapped up in the character. Uh, there's such a wealth of stuff, really. And um, what I'm going to play now is this is my, this is a bit of the chat with the nerve because some of it didn't get recorded. But this here she is talking about a time with Michelle Piccoli, which I think is really interesting. You both had this special bond together um oh, because michelle i have i've been working with him for a very long time i mean not for a long time but for a long time but not a long period of time 
But since a long time, because it's very, I did a film with him when I did Belle de Jour, so it's really very far ago. Even with uh, Agnès de Varda, it was even before that. And uh, how can I say? It's not some, uh, Michel is not someone, he's someone I met, but it's not someone that I saw, you know, uh, uh, out of the of the of the filming, that made a relation very close. I mean, he was really of my favorite uh, uh, actor, you know, for a partner, for as, a, as an actor, you know, for me that was really very very important for me. It was a great, uh, more than pleasure. Uh, the first time you were in a film together was The Creatures, wasn't it, in nineteen sixty six? What was it? The, uh, the Creatures with Agnes for Agnes Varda. Exactly, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. It. Yeah, but that was a very short. I mean, yeah, yes, it was. <laughs> it was a. Uh, not speaking, you know, I was uh, deaf, you know, deaf in uh, in the film. So I cannot say it was my my uh, biggest remember uh, of the film. Anyway, you know, <laughs> it's that since that period, yes. But then, is after that is Belle de Jour. I mean, quite a stressful shoot for you, wasn't it, Belle de Jour? I mean, the really close relation we had is when we did the film of. Uh, uh, from the the book of uh, François Sagan, you know, Chama, uh, uh, but I think it's La Chamade. Absolutely, that's it. Yeah. Then on that we had a relation between really a man and a woman, so it was a, a closer relation, you know, for things we had to shoot together. I think that's why I really spent more time. That was it. This one. Is that a, is that a film that you really bonded on together? Yeah, we were quite close because we had you know more relation, you know, uh, the two of us, you know, together than all the other films we did before and. Uh, well, mostly after, but he's a very strong. Uh, he's a strong character, you know. He has a very uh, a strong character. He has a, a very strong. When you see him on screen, he's a very. Uh, he's very deep. His look, his voice. I think he's got a very powerful presence. Yes, absolutely. Yes, he is. That when he was in the Young Girls of Rochefort, when he was. That was very nice. But he had more scenes with my. Uh, I had not that many scenes, you know, with uh, with him. We were. Uh, we were, you know, the four of us, so it was not, we were not so close. But the whole shooting, you know, the film was uh, really, it was uh, it was wonderful. It was very difficult because it was really very hard. It's been a very difficult shooting. It's such a beautiful film, though. Yeah, it's a beautiful film. The, the film Benjamin, as well, that you did with Michelle Deville. Um... Uh, oh, yes, that's a film I did a long time ago. That was... Uh, it's been very, uh, it was a very difficult moment for me because that was a moment where I had to, uh, I had not even started the film when I had the accident of my sister. So it's been very difficult. And, uh, Michelle has been very special at that time. That was forever, you know, a different, a different kind of, uh, of feeling, you know, the relation. He has been very, very close to me when I was shooting at that time. I was really, very, really lost. Yeah. So I mean that that comes after when you both did Belle de Jour together. I mean, you have you have some great scenes in Belle de Jour together. Do you, do you have memories of working with Michelle on that film that were quite pleasant? Oh yes, yes, yes. Because I knew it, I knew it, uh, I knew it then. But the studio, it was very official. And it was a very very different kind of a uh, different kind of a uh, of relation order for that shooting. It was not a uh, as close as the one we. It was an important situation. It was the same than when we did uh, Shama La Shama. No. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay, I don't think I have much more to tell you. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that, that's just a lovely little laugh on the end there. That's just the kind of warmth that you get. You know, there's this reputation for being ice queen and all this. She's just a warm person. Really. I mean, I was surprised that she that she was willing to call me and tell me this stuff for my book. But I was also extremely honoured. Uh, just ridiculously honoured. But uh, yeah, so I mean. That's fairly recent. She's still going strong. She's still coming to events. She's still being honoured, you know, at fest- festivals and award shows. She's still making films. She's got a few films coming up, and um, I'm just looking forward to what's next, to be honest, because she's been so fantastic in the last few years. But there was a great quote about her. But you know, someone was asking her about her um, reputation and her, her status as, a, as the queen of European cinema. And she said, "There are priorities in life. And being an actress is not the main priority." So I think if being an actress is not the main priority to her, then that role is at least near the top for the nerve. She continues to grow as an artist with each new passing year. Every film that comes out, which we we are treated to, um, her roles of more dimensions and layers than ever before now. The poignant, the poetic, has got pathos in them, dark humour, very balanced performances, um, subtle she measures everything completely well and you never get a single hokey phony moment like there is in a lot of other films 
she just knows what to do she knows how to get the balance just right every step she makes it and especially now she just seems even more sharp so there's like a certain wisdom and an inner peace which shines through in her performances I find even when she's playing someone in dire straits or a vital crossroads as as she often is but it's a glorious time to be following the, f- the film career of Catherine Deneuve and I mean she seems to be getting better and better I mean Long may this role continue, that's what I say. So let's see what's next, and all the fans across the world, let's just see what's going to happen next. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, thanks thanks for listening, if you did listen. If you didn't, turn it off and urinate on your computer in disgust. You can buy my book, if you like, on Deneuve, and the one on Michelle Piccoli, and any other film books I've written, you can get them on eBay and Amazon, and from my website, which is wisdomtwinsbooks.weebly.com. Uh, thanks for listening to Scenes 3, and I'll see y'all real soon, honey. Oh yeah, thanks for listening. You gotta come back another time. You're gonna like it. You might find something about Al in there. You never know. Ooh. Well, let's go. I, I want some crumpets now. I'm getting a bit hungry. I need some crumpets and some fucking soup. Ooh, uh.